Now, my next guest is a complete mystery to me, but thankfully my producers have given me and you a few hints. This gentleman's work is worth a thousand words and also a multitude of sounds. One of his most recognizable achievements, well, it's become an icon for the voice of a generation as well as the city in which we live right now. All right, let's bring out our mystery guest. Welcome to Taking Stock. How are you? Hi, Vim. Glad to be here. Please, have a seat. So they talk about an icon for a generation and sounds and so on. I mean, are you involved in the, in the music industry? Somewhat, yes. Somewhat. Mm -hmm. Are you a musician? No. You're not a musician. Are you a songwriter? No. Are you an agent? No. Nope. No. All right. <laughs> Three no's. That's a trifecta. So um, if you're involved in the music industry, but you've created icons, are you an artist? No. Nope. No, are you? I mean, not? artist, I mean, musician, artist. I, I think I'm an artist, yeah. You think you're an artist. Are you a painter? No. Are you a photographer? Yes. You're a photographer. <laughs> and um, you take uh, photographs of musicians? Yes, I do. You do. Um, and it says, sorry, of a generation. I got to think that that must imply that somebody here is young. So <laughs> is, does that mean that uh, you take photographs of uh, current musicians, of uh, current popular musicians, music? I've been doing it all my life. Actually. You've been doing it all your life? Well, the icon I keep thinking about if it's New York City uh, is, of course, um, John Lennon, right? I mean, he used to wear, wear a T-shirt. I You're love getting New York. close. Is that, is that your photograph? <laughs> That's my photograph. That's your photograph. Yes. So you are um, Bob Gruen. Yes, I am. Welcome to Taking Stock. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. Well done. Thank you. Um, tell me about that. That's a, I mean, talk about an icon for a generation. That's an icon for the world. Tell me about that photograph of John Lennon. Was he standing in front of... Uh, well, there's the one where he's standing in front of the Statue, Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty wearing known, the, the, New York the New York City T-shirt. He was actually yeah. on the roof of a penthouse apartment that he had. And we were there taking pictures for an album cover, actually doing portraits of his face. And then afterwards, we went around the roof taking a few more pictures for publicity. And I had given him a shirt like that a year earlier. Um, I used to wear them all the time. Uh, people think I gave it to him that day, but I had given it to him a year earlier, and I, with the whole skyline around, I said, do you still have that shirt I gave you? And he said, yeah, he did, and he knew right where it was, and he went down and put it on and came back up, and we took that picture. Now, how did you become um, uh, connected with, uh, with John Lennon? I mean, what was the relationship like? Um, well, we became friends. I, I met him through an interview for a magazine, actually a story about the Elements Memory Band that he was working with. Uh, but they liked my pictures and asked me to come back more often, and I started taking pictures with them. At the beginning, he lived right around the corner from me in Greenwich Village, and so that was really convenient. And then when he moved uptown, we stayed in touch. And did, I, did you ever expect that that pictures. photograph would, would become such a universal image, not only of John oh, Lennon, no. but it would mean so much because of what happened to John Lennon and, and well, his murder I mean, and then uh, in New York I, City? I never expected him to leave so suddenly. Uh, but we didn't know. I mean, the day we were taking it, we were taking it for publicity pictures, and it was just one of many. Uh, had no idea it would take off as it had that, you know, of John Lennon, there's millions of pictures of him. I don't know why that one is picked out by everybody, but he looks confident, he looks comfortable, and people seem to really like it. But no, we didn't have any idea how big it was going to get. And uh, I've got to ask you, we're going to continue the conversation, but the mm. fact that we don't have record albums anymore, I mean, has that changed your view of the well, business? Well, content is king nowadays. When people stare at their computer screens, they've got to see something. So that's kind of good. So there's me. a new world for it. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, we're <laughs> going to continue the conversation with our mystery guest, the mystery no longer, Bob Gruen, rock and roll photographer, artist extraordinaire. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. All right, we're speaking with our mystery guest, a mystery no longer, Bob Gruen, rock and roll photographer extraordinaire, as well as an artist. He's got a new book out. It's called Rock Scene, Bob Gruen. Bob, you know, one of the other icons that you've really kind of put together is all of the photographs of Led Zeppelin. Yeah, what? standing in front of the airplane. That's, That's a right. well-known photo. <laughs> How did that photograph uh, happen? That was actually the first day I met him. Uh, I went with Lisa Robinson to... Uh, we flew on the Led, Zepp Led Zeppelin's plane. They had a plane called the Starship, and when you rent it, they put your name on it. Um, again, they asked me to take a picture, kind of a snapshot for them, so they could remember being on the plane, and it's turned out to be one of the most popular pictures of the band. And it kind of sums up all the excess of the 70s, you know, having your own giant plane like that. It was a nice plane. <laughs> are, you, are you surprised at the photographs that become the icons? Because it's difficult to predict. I mean, of course, you in the book, you've got, you've got you hundreds of photographs. Know. 
Is there anything that stands out in your mind that you think, gee, that should have been the icon, but no well, one really paid attention to it? The picture on the back of the book, the Tina Turner picture. I, I can really or like Tina Turner, because you did yeah. follow a lot of Ike and Tina Turner, right? I started out with them, yeah. and, uh, and that picture it doesn't get printed enough. It, it just really captures all the excitement of Tina Turner, and uh, uh, it's one of my favorites. Tell me about the rock and roll or the music venues, right? It used to be at least in New York City, Max's Kansas City, as well as CBGB's, both of them gone. Oh, there's a lot of them in the bottom what, line. What is, what is, what, where does that now take place? Does it, does it you happen go anywhere? <laughs> you gotta go to Brooklyn. All right, well, well there's some really good send venues. our producer I mean, there. I was just at a place called the Brooklyn Bowl the other day, which is fantastic. You can go bowling, you get a great meal and a show at the same time. Uh, you couldn't do that in Manhattan. Uh, you know, time marches on. I, you don't expect anything to stay the same. Things change. And, and you're still you're still taking photographs. Oh yeah, yeah? I'm still taking photos. But I, I enjoy the change. I enjoy seeing things different all the time. And you're using digital technology now, I guess. No more well, film. Well, you got to use digital. I mean, a magazine won't accept a print or a slide. They only want to scan. They used to scan them for you, but now uh, they just expect you to deliver a scan. So. Um, introduction of the book I see written by Debbie Harry yep, uh, of, of Blondie. Mm -hmm. um, what, what can you tell us about her and, and your relationship and really how Max's Kansas City shaped the whole musical generation? Well, I guess I met Debbie back then uh, around Max's and uh, when they were playing at Max's and CBGB's when Blondie was first starting. Actually, there was a band before that called the Stilettos and that's when I met Debbie. And, uh, and she's always been the most beautiful woman in rock and roll. Uh, probably the most beautiful woman in the world. So I'm very lucky to know her and very lucky that she, uh, you know, did the forward right. for my book. I want to thank you very much. Bob Gruen, oh, thank you. his new book, Rock Scene. Thanks for taking stock. I'm Pim Fox. Have a great weekend.